things are as elegant as curved, polished wood, especially at 150 kilometers an hour and driving a slap shot right past a goalie. A lot of engineering goes into packing that punch. Call it the science behind he shoots, he scores. <laughs> The Irish, some 1,200 years ago, were playing Erling, a form of hockey on grass with simple goal zones. In the 17th century, Amerindians used curved sticks in a game they called Batagaway. The sport we play today was developed by British soldiers in 1855 at Kingston, Ontario, as a pastime during Upper Canada's long winters. Making a hockey stick requires the assembly of several pieces of wood and fiberglass. These sticks are all replicas of those of great hockey professionals. The shaft is made of a piece of poplar onto which they glue two thin strips of birch. This is placed on a circular conveyor equipped with a press which holds the pieces together while the glue dries. Then this multi bladed saw cuts the wood into three identical stick shaft pieces. The shafts are then moved to a precision sander. The shaft has to be reinforced with fiberglass. With a roller, they apply a coat of epoxy resin, a kind of glue, onto which they place carbon reinforced fiberglass. The resin has to dry and harden. The stick shaft is placed in an individual mold and cooked in this press heated to 80 degrees for 12 minutes. The shaft then goes to a milling machine equipped with diamond headed knives which round the edges. A finish is applied to the shaft for a second sanding which brings out the grain of the wood. Now they glue small blocks to the end of the shaft in order to attach the blade. Urethane glue is used, which resists water and humidity, and is specially made for hockey sticks. This glue dries in 15 minutes at 38 degrees centigrade. This slitter cuts the shaft and wood blocks in order to slide in the blade. This machine inserts the glue in the blade into the stick shaft. The stick is placed on a conveyor leading it to the next step and giving the glue a chance to dry well. Then both sides of the blade are sanded to thin them. The sticks are replicas of those used by hockey professionals. This computer controlled digital lathe cuts the blade. Data on all the cuts are in the computer's memory. The blade now has to be curved. It's steamed for a minute, allowing humidity to penetrate the wood and make it flexible. Then the blade is placed in this curved mold where it's heated for 50 seconds at 55 degrees centigrade. The blade is then worked by hand. The new blade is compared with the pattern of a hockey player's stick to obtain precisely the same curvature. This is why the company keeps 6,000 blades on hand. Now the blade is sanded down to the desired thickness. The blade must also be reinforced. Fiberglass cloth is soaked with epoxy resin. Then they place the cloth on the blade and leave a good margin around it. They get rid of air bubbles, then put it into an oven to dry at 32 degrees over 24 hours. The surplus fiberglass hardens and is cut with a bandsaw. This step requires quite a degree of manual dexterity. Finishing is done with this circular sander.
Finally, the blade is dipped into this epoxy resin to give it a nice luster. All that remains is to paint the stick. Here, the company logos are applied via silk screening. Beside the 6,000 personal models of professional hockey players, this company produces 65 other models of hockey sticks. Each week, they make about 40,000 for an annual total of 1,600,000 sticks.